Welcome to the Blind Zone, where curiosity brings its own reward. And what am I curious about today? Well, this is kind of just a me thing. I was thinking in my head about the covenants in the Bible and if they were relevant today. And the short answer is, yes, they are. And so I'm going to explain what a covenant is. The six covenants that are covered in the Bible that I'm going to talk about and how they just show you the, I don't know, just, just the confidence you can have in God because of his love and care for his people. So first off, what is a covenant? When you think about covenant, most people think contract. When I think contract, I think of me and my cell phone provider. I don't pay the bill. They shut off my cell phone and our contract is ended. With a covenant, though, it goes a little deeper. And back in the olden days, there were four types of covenants that I'll describe. But a covenant is basically something that two people decide or two or more people or two groups of people or two somethings. They decide what and how they're going to do something and they agree to do it. And in um, the instances of the six that we're going to talk about today, God is covenantally involved in all of these. Now, there's two types of covenant in unconditional where God says, whatever you do, I don't really care. I'm going to do my provisional will and whatever needs to happen, I will make that happen. So it's unconditional. And then there's a conditional covenant that we're going to talk about where God said, if you do this, then I will do that. And if you do not do this, then I will do something else to thwart your behavior. So that's uh, conditional. So back in the olden days, there were four basic types of covenants. One we still use today. The first one is the handshake and on your word covenant. And we use that still today when you're repeating marriage vows and you say, you know, before God and before these people and, and you say that you're going to stick with them through thick and thin, you know, healthy, sick, you know, prosperous, broke. And when that really doesn't work out, we forget that that was a covenant you made before God and through whatever reason, people walk away from their marriages and, and the covenants broke. So it's the easiest one to get out of because it's just a handshake in your word and you're trusting that the other person is going to keep their word as well. The second kind of covenant is called the sandal covenant. And you see this in the book of Ruth where Boaz needs to make an arrangement with the kinsman redeemer for the woman he wants to marry, which is Ruth. And after he and the kinsman redeemer make a plan, uh, Boaz takes off his sandal and hands it to him. And that was seen by the witnesses at the gate. And they all confirmed that this was done that it was done in good faith and the sandal proved his his desirability to have this uh, fortified or ratified. The third one is a salt covenant. Back in the day, salt was really, really important and you carried it around with you. Now, if you had an agreement between somebody and you wanted a salt covenant, you would take a pinch of your salt, they would take a pinch of their salt, and you would drop it into each other's bags. Now, the likelihood of you finding your you know, 100 grains of salt and his salt bag were so infinitesimal. Now, you could break into his house and steal a salt bag and, you know, try to negate the whole thing. But that's not the point. It was showing you that this was much going to be much harder to break than the sandal or the handshake covenant. And the fourth one is the one we see in the Abrahamic covenant, and that's a blood covenant. And that's where two people would take uh, animals, cut it apart, put one on the left, one on the right. They would kill it drain the blood and the people who were making the covenant together they would pass through and they would say that we are very serious about this. we killed an animal and the only way you could renege on that covenant is if you sewed that animal back together poured their blood in and made them come back alive that's the only way to come back from a blood covenant now when we get to the covenant of abraham we'll see that this is a unconditional covenant and that Abraham didn't even have a, a place in that because God passed through the pieces. And he said, in essence, I'm, this covenant's never going to be broken. There's nothing. There's, there's no man made anything that has come between us. It's just me and the animals. And I'm going to make this happen. So that's the four different kinds. You had the conditional and unconditional. Now, the six covenants in the Bible that, that I'm going to bring up today, the first one is the Noahic covenant, or when Noah finally rested after the flood and the ark opened and they all came out and God made a covenant with them, but he did not make it with Noah. 
God made the covenant with himself and he told Noah because if he would have told Noah, then the death of Noah would have ended the covenant. But God made a, a covenant with himself that he would never again destroy the earth and that the, the rainbow would be a sign that, that his word would be true. So whenever you see a rainbow, you can trust that this is just another uh, physical symbol that God is still in agreement that he's not going to destroy the earth with a flood. Now, I don't know if he parses language, so I don't know if he's going to destroy it in another way, but at least we can expect that we're not going to get flooded out. So that was the Noahic covenant. The next one is the Abrahamic covenant. And again, that was an unconditional covenant that God told to Abraham, but he was involved in as much as Abraham would then grow through the, the hand of God, grow a people of God, which would be then the Israelite people. But God said to Abraham, I will do three things in you. I will give you land, seed, and you will be a blessing. Now the land part, he was going to apportion just for the Israelite people. The seed leads both to the prosperous way that they will have, they will be so populated that you couldn't even count them like the stars in the sky or the sand of the sea, and that the land will be fertile and the seeds that were planted will grow in abundance to feed this great multitude of people. And that he would also, by the time they got there, that they would be a blessing. The next covenant is the Mosaic covenant. When we find this, uh, the Abrahamic covenant is found in Genesis 15. And the next one is the Mosaic Covenant, and that's found in Exodus, and that is a conditional covenant. That's the only conditional covenant that we're going to talk about in the six. And that was because these people, after 400 years in slavery and captivity, they were um, going out to go into the prom. They were heading towards the promised land. And God said, I am your God, and if you follow me and do what I'm telling you, you will be blessed. So do this and you'll be blessed. Do this other thing and you'll be cursed. And in fact, uh, Deuteronomy 28 is the blessings and cursings chapter. And if you ever read in the Bible that there was trouble in Barun for the Israelites, you just have to look up what they did, flip back to Deuteronomy 28, and you'll see that God said, when you do this, this something bad is going to happen. And it always does. And a, a real quick example of that is when Solomon went to Egypt and got a lot of horses and chariots. If you flip to Deuteronomy 28, it says clearly, don't go to Egypt and don't get your horses and chariots. So he tells them what the repercussions were and Solomon got those repercussions. So that's the Mosaic Covenant and that again is conditional. The next one is the Palestinian Covenant. And right now I know you're thinking Palestinian people but this is not for that. This is going back to the Abrahamic covenant, and this has to do with the land. So this is just another piece of the land covenant that was promised to Abraham back in Genesis. This is just a, a, a refortification of that purpose. The next one is the Davidic covenant, and you can find this in the Samuels, the book of Samuels, the, the historically theological book. And David wanted to build God a temple because he had lived in a tabernacle that was, you know, carried on poles. And God said, no, I don't want you to build me a house. I'm going to build you a house and you will sit on the throne for eternity. Now I know you're thinking, well, that didn't really happen, but it really did because Jesus is in the line of lineage of David. And he's still sitting on the temple. I'm sorry, he's still sitting on the throne. So that was the Davidic covenant. And the next covenant is the new covenant, and that's Jesus. So Jesus is the new covenant, and he comes. And what he ultimately does is fulfills all the other covenants that were previously made. And he wraps it all up. And when he came as a baby, he started that. But when he comes back as the king in the second coming, then all those other covenants are fulfilled. So that's it. Those are the six covenants. Um, what a covenant means, what, excuse me, they were like in the olden days, and how many we still use, and basically 
I can only think of one, and that's at the marriage ceremony where you tell people you will do this, you won't do that. And it's just based on hopefully your integrity that you carry through. Anyway, that's it. So that's what a covenant is. And I was curious to see if I could relay it all. And I guess I could. So that's it. Hope that was helpful. And we'll see you next week on The Blind Zone.